The open chain foot assessment is a great way to determine the potential range of motion that you can observe in your client's feet. It is one of the many assessments that you will do with your clients. You do not want to determine any sort of foot posture simply based off of one assessment in an open chain. Again, we are just gathering information that we will use with the rest of our assessments. Now, when we do that open chain assessment, you're going to have the client lying on their back, starting totally relaxed. You want the legs to fall into their natural position. Oftentimes that is going to be in a turned out position. So that is a natural position to be slightly turned out. When the feet are turned out and the client is relaxed, I like to start to observe the right side versus the left side. Do you see any sort of asymmetry in how much maybe the right side is turning out versus the left side? If we look here, we can observe that on this client, the left foot is actually a little bit more externally rotated than the right. We're just garnering information and taking note of that. From there, you're going to pick up the legs and you're going to bring them into a centered position. We're going to rotate in and rotate out. Again, we're just observing potential range of motion. From here, you're going to give a little tug to the legs and then I'm comparing the medial malleolus to each other. This is starting to assess for any potential leg length discrepancy. If you happen to notice any sort of leg length discrepancy, you can then do a secondary measurement or you could refer out to ensure that it is not a limb length discrepancy. From here, we're going to get into a foot specific assessment. For this, I'm going to start on her right leg, which means I'm taking my right hand. I'm going to grab my thumb and my pointer finger, and I'm going to rotate my hand, and I'm going to grab the divots directly underneath the ankle bone. This is the talus. So I feel the talus on either side of my fingers. My left thumb is going to go on the head of the fifth metatarsal. So this is my position for assessing the right ankle. I'm going to start by moving the foot in and out. And if you can see that movement, I want you to appreciate that we are moving the subtalar joints. This is going to be inversion. This is going to be eversion. It is normal to have twice as much inversion as eversion. So we can see a lot of inversion and half the amount of eversion. Now for the ankle, you want to invert, evert, go into center. This is considered neutral. And then keeping your fingers where they are, you are going to dorsiflex as hard as you can to find the ankle joint dorsiflexion in neutral. Remember to walk optimally, you need five degrees of ankle joint dorsiflexion in neutral. If we look at this angle that is created by the ankle, if you see a 90 degree angle, that means that they have zero degrees of dorsiflexion. If you see an 85 degree angle, that means they have five degrees of dorsiflexion. And then if you see a 95 degree angle, that means they have a negative five degrees dorsiflexion. So here we can see and observe that she is at a 90 degree angle, which means she's sitting at zero degrees dorsiflexion. Now that doesn't tell me which muscle or why she has limited ankle dorsiflexion. So the next assessment you want to do is called a silver scold test. Part of a silver scold test is you're going to do maximum dorsiflexion and then you will ask the client to bend their knee slightly when you ask them to. They'll relax the leg back down and what you'll notice is if there's an increase in dorsiflexion when they bend the knee that is the gastrocnemius that is causing the limitation so here we go i have my hands positioned where i need them inversion eversion to neutral i'm going to push into my maximum dorsiflexion i can determine hold that pressure and then ask the client to bend the knee and i got no increase in range of motion Let's do it again. Relax down, find neutral, push, 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 bend the knee, no increase, and then relax down. What that meant is that with the bending of the, the knee, no increase in dorsiflexion, I'm going to go after the soleus or I'm going to assess more to see if it is a bony block or it is a structurally short Achilles tendon. To the other side, left leg, left hand, thumb, 
pointer finger, put her leg straight. Right thumb goes on the head of the fifth metatarsal. Invert, evert. Find neutral, push, push, push. Look at that angle. Hold the dorsiflexion, bend the knee slightly. No increase in range of motion. Shake it out, do it one more time. Find neutral, dorsiflexion, assess, bend the knee, and then release. That is your ankle and subtalar joint. As we move further into the midfoot, we're going to start to move the first ray. So I just want you to appreciate the way that the first ray moves. I'm grabbing the first metatarsal, moving it up and down. I'm going to be looking at the big toe. I wanna to see that range of motion within that big toe. Remember that part of dorsiflexion of the big toe is plantar flexion of the first metatarsal. So we want to appreciate that. Is there any sort of bunion that is present? Do we see any sort of hammer toes? And then we want to determine what is the midline of the foot. For this, we're going to look at the bottom of the foot and we want to see that the midline is falling between her second and third digit. We're going to repeat on the other side, looking here. Is there any sort of accessory navicular? How's that first ray move? First MPJ, great range of motion. No crepitus, crepitus would be arthritis. No bunion, assessing for hammer toes. Looking at the midline of the foot. Hers is centered between the second and the third. No long second digit. And we're taking that information to understand their potential. What is happening in their foot posture and their foot range of motion when they are relaxed and not in gravity? You're going to take that information, note any observations, and then you will compare it to what you see in a closed chain assessment.